Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is good to be here, and I'm glad you have uh, tuned in this morning. Um, let us go to God in, in prayer, and then uh, we will go into the Word of God this morning. Um, <clears throat> now, Father, as we humbly come to you through the Word, not only give us ears to hear, but wills to respond so that, Lord, we could respond to what you have to say to us. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. And Father, Lord, we ask right now that you would heal those right now who are in a very uh, uh, hurtful situation, Father. Uh, they're burnt out, they're stressed because of, Lord, the pandemic and what's going on with their jobs. Uh, some, Father, right now, God, are struggling to make ends meet. Lord, you know who they are because, Father, Lord, you know everything. And so, Lord, we come to you, Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart, and we're so grateful that you blessed us to see another day. Father, now, Lord, have your way in this meeting today. We ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Um, <clears throat> we are in a pandemic, aren't we? The disease has spread to millions and, and it seems that it shall, it's still not under control. Uh, governments seem to quarrel over the next best steps and um, the economy is in a downturn. So uncertainty continues uh, to um, grow in our society. They're adjusting the video here for me. <laughs> um, and so, can I be honest? I'll be real honest with you this morning with regards to uh, Zoom and all of these meeting platforms. I don't know about you, but I'm Zoomed out, <laughs> okay? Uh, it seems like um, all of our meetings are done virtually now and um, and we have to connect to a meeting platform. Uh, but with uncertainty comes stress and worry. So given the fact that uh, many people uh, use their work as the escape from the stress of marital problems or reminders of how dysfunctional their families are, now there is nowhere to go but home. Nowhere to go but home. So it's as if God is saying to his people, get your house in order. Get your house in order. What that means is face the things you were running from when you were able to escape eight to 10 hours a day to go to work. God is telling us we are no longer excused from running from our current situation, but to face them head on. Because of life's uncertainty, we must be able to handle stress before stress handles us. We must be able to handle stress before it leads to burnout. These unusual times brings a certain amount of stress. While it could serve as a positive pressure that results in motivation and movement, oftentimes stress, <clears throat> if it's not managed, can result in a negative pressure that runs you into the ditches of distress, of danger, and destruction. But I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you that with God, you can discover peace and rest no matter what your circumstances are. And so I would like for you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, as we start this discourse this morning. 
And in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, you'll find these words. <clears throat> it reads, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. These words come from Jesus himself, where previously he says that all things have been handed over to him by his father, and no one knows the son except the father, nor does anyone know the father except the son and anyone to whom the son wills to reveal him. And then he says, come to me, which is the invitation to all. It's a universal invitation to come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. In other words, are you burdened? Are you weary? Are you stressed? Are you worn out? Are you burnt out? Are you zoomed out? Are you, <laughs> are you worked out? He says, I'm talking to you. I, I want you to come to me. It's a universal invitation. Come to me. All who are weary and heavy laden. And then the promise is, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. That's the promise of Jesus. And if Jesus says it, I believe it. <laughs> because it is a promise that is made from God himself. That if you just lay it at his feet, if you laid the burdens at his feet, if you say, Jesus, I can't do this anymore. I, I, I feel burnt out right now. And if you just give it over to Jesus, then he says, I will give you rest. I will give you rest because guess why? You, you know why? Because everything has been handed over to me by my father who's in heaven. Hmm. Everything has been handed to me. So I can make the promise to give you rest because I am the only one that even in uncertain circumstances can give you peace in the midst of your turmoil. I am the only one that can right the ship when it is sinking. I'm the only one that can fix your dysfunctional family that you've been trying to work on. Wow. Wow. I, I'm the only one that can fix the marriage situation that you're in that seems to uh, always causes stress in your life, that seems to always be something that pulls you down that should be lifting you up, but it continues to pull you down because you have not given it to me. Come to me. Bring those heavy burdens. Bring all of the situation. Bring the, bring the situation that you have to be in the house when it's a beautiful day outside and you can't go out and sip your Starbucks and go out into your friend gatherings and sup, uh, sup some tea together. Bring all of that to me because you know what? I am more than a friend. I am your savior. And, and you know... To be honest with you, um, we, we need to do more supping with Jesus than with our friends. We, we, we need to do more supping with Jesus than with our family. We need to do more supping with Jesus than being logged in all the time, working 24 hours and seven days a week. We need to do more connecting with our Savior. And that's really what this is, is a call to connect with Jesus. Because when we connect with Jesus, we will get rest. We will get peace. And you know what? That's what this is all about, isn't it? We're, we're in this pandemic and, and there seems to not be, there seems to be unrest. 
There seems to be unrest in our country. There seems to be un unrest in the White House. There seems to be unrest in the world globally. There seems to be unrest that should be an indication to us as children of God that when there is unrest, that means God is speaking loudly right now. He is speaking very clear right now through the unrest that I am the only one that can give you peace. I'm the only one that not only can give you peace, but the world peace. But you need to come to me. That's the condition. <laughs> that is the condition, is to come to me. Come to me is what Jesus is saying here. And so I just want to talk to you today about really... not allowing stress to undo you. Not allowing stress to undo you. Because we are in stressful times, if we, we, we need to admit that. These are stressful situations. But I said at the beginning that there is positive stress. And that positive stress, and, and I'm not an expert on this, but, but I've read about it, and, 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 and the expert says that positive stress actually promotes movement. It promotes motivation. It gives you purpose. That's positive stress. But after you've been moving and after you have found your purpose, situations that happen in our lives come and sneak up upon us that we didn't plan on and then we don't know how to handle it and then that's when it becomes negative because it starts to affect our purpose it starts to affect our mental attitude we start to withdraw from people when, when God is saying, I want you to be connected with the body of Christ, we start to withdraw from the body of Christ. And, and, and then it becomes to wear on us. And then the bills mount up. And then unemployment rates go up. And then children don't act the way you want them to act. And then the boss gives you a pink slip saying that we don't need you anymore, or we can't afford you anymore, then it becomes a negative thing because we are not responding to it the way we ought to. But I want to encourage you that God, he can give you rest. Amen. He can help you through these very stressful and difficult circumstances. So this is really what I want you to do. So how do you begin to work or walk the road to transformation in peaceful assurance that God will never call you to do more than he gives you time and ability to do? So how do you begin to walk the road to transformation in peaceful assurance that God will never give you or call you. He will never call you to do more, that is, than he gives you time and ability to do. I must say that there are a lot of people right now who are doing more than what God called them to do. And that is causing stress in your life. Because if God call you to do it, he's gonna also give you the time to do it. If he calls you for a specific purpose, goal, he's gonna give you the ability, the wisdom to accomplish it, but he's also gonna give you the time, the time to do it. What causes a lot of stress in people's lives today is because <laughs> And I said this before, you're not walking in your lane. You're not walking in the mission that God has called you to. 
And when you're not walking in the mission or in the lane that God has called you to, then it becomes stressful because God didn't give you the capacity All right. to navigate that lane. He has given you a different course, but because <clears throat> you're not handling stress well, because you're being reactive instead of proactive, then you are getting in someone else's lane in, in another area that you shouldn't be in. And so we need to understand how to handle stress, how to handle stress before it handles you, how to handle stress before it handles you. And so I'm going to give you really four words, four words to do that, four words to do that. And it's really simple. And, 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 and I want you to jot these down if you can, uh, because this is how you get out of the overload ditch. This is how you get out of that uh, uh, stressful situation that you find yourself in. And, and so how do you do that? Okay, here's four words, and I'm, I'm going to give it to you. Just First of all, I want you to write down, slow down. Well, just say slow. <laughs> slow. And then I want you to write down stop. And then I want you to write down yield. And then finally, resume speed. So slow. What I mean by that is slow down. Slow down and make the necessary changes, first of all, for good physical health. You see, so many of us, <clears throat> we talk about taking care of ourselves mentally, taking care of ourselves even spiritually, which we'll get to, but don't forget about the temple. Don't forget about the temple where the Holy Spirit dwells. Because if you don't take care of yourself physically, then you're not going to be able to arrive at the destination that God has called you in this life. Because why? Because the physical ailment pops up in your life. And, and I mean, you know, for a lot of folks, you know, uh, in our culture, African-American community, we have high blood pressure, the big ones. We have cholesterol, high cholesterol. We have uh, uh, diabetes. All of these things plague the African-American community. But on top of that, because you are quarantined at home or you're isolated at home, you can't go out like you normally do and, and have the normal physical activity that you're used to. So there is a tendency that health issues can even get worse because you're not as active. So you need to slow down. And, and, and I want to let you know that slow down means you get intentional and getting the spiritual food you need so that you can also make the changes for good physical health. Question, do you eat a balanced and healthy diet? Um, do you exercise at least three times a week? As I was going over this, I was going through the list even in my own personal life, and, and I'm missing the mark on many of these. Do you take at least one day of rest each week? Disconnect from technology, even from your mobile devices. Uh, and do you really rest? Do you really rest? And, and I don't mean just get in front of Netflix or Prime and, and just look at movies after movies and shows and shows. No, no, no. Rest even mentally. Not connecting with all of the technology. 
Rest means you take some solitude time and you start to rediscover the God-given purpose that God has given you. That is resting. You know, learn. Jesus says, take my yoke. And you need to learn of Jesus. Because what he has to say is important and vital for your growth. Not only for your growth spiritually, but also physically. Do you take at least one day of rest each week? Do you get adequate restful sleep most nights? Do you get that rest that you need? Because it's scriptural, because the Psalm says, Psalms 127 and 2 says, in vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. The Bible. And so we need to understand Psalm 127 and 2 is saying that you need to slow down. Make the necessary changes for good physical health. You need to be intentional about it. You need to slow down anything that's vying for your time. You need to, you need to put, put your hand in their proverbial face and say, no, 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 no. I can do that another time. But right now, I need to rest. I need to rest. And I'm talking to a lot of those grandmothers who are overworked right now. You're at home and your children are living with you. Your children, children are living with you right now. And you having to take care of everything. You are running back and forth and all of these other things. Grandmama, rest. Take some time for yourself. Let the adult children be the adults that they should be and be the parent they need to be to take care of their children at this time. We need to take this to heart. Slow, <laughs> slow down to make the necessary changes, but also watch this, slow down and evaluate your priorities. We need to all do that, okay? We, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes uh, four and six says, better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. How many of you chasing after the wind right now? You've been chasing after the wind. You've been following other people's priorities, but not your priorities. You've been chasing the wind. Slow down and evaluate your priorities. You need to make a list of everything you do. Then consider other priorities that should be on the list. How many times, how many people have made a list of what you do here lately? It's important to make a list of what you do so you can consider other priorities that should be on the list. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, if, if God is not off the list, then you need to reconsider your priority list. He needs to be number one on your list. He needs to be on number one on your list. You need to slow down and evaluate your, your, your priorities because better one handful with tranquility, that's peace, that tranquility, than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. What are you chasing today? What have you been chasing the last week through, during this pandemic? God is telling you to slow down and evaluate your priorities. You need to choose your commitments carefully. Slow down and evaluate your priorities. Choose your commitments uh, carefully. Eliminate, what that means, eliminate unnecessary stressful obligations. And the reason why people are so stressed out today is because they have so many obligations that are stressing them out. They uh, they, they basically have filled their plate where it's so overflowing right now that you don't even have time or the capacity to make those commitments. Okay? Don't give in to the pressure of urgency. I love that one. 
Don't give in to the pressure of urgency. It seems like right now everything is urgent, isn't it? <laughs> because you're at home. You know, last week I was looking at a, a, a pile of things that I need to get to. And uh, at the time, at the moment, it seemed like it was urgent to get to it because it was there, right? You know, it's there. You know, I don't know how many of you just see piles of stuff. You see piles of clothes, right? And you tired of seeing those piles of clothes, right? But the time was not to wash the clothes. The time was to work. But after work, then I can wash the clothes. You see, if I had put washing clothes ahead of work, then there could be consequences. And so we need to understand, don't give in to the pressure of urgency. And, and, and we need to understand that. And, and, and you need to tackle only one problem at a time. Tackle only one problem at a time. Okay? So slow down and evaluate your priorities, but also you need to slow down and nourish your spiritual life. You knew it was coming, didn't you? You need to slow down and nourish your spiritual life. Psalms 119 and 71 <laughs> says, oh, it was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decree. Brothers and sisters, can I be really honest with you? Because, see, the word of God is truth. Is that God sometimes has to slow us down through physical afflictions so that we can learn his decrees. In other words, he has given you opportunity and opportunity and opportunity to discover those decrees while you were physically well. But then he had to, he allowed sickness. He allowed something to come to trip you up physically so that you can learn his decrees. That, that ought to let you know that God is telling us today that his word is more important than even your physical health. Because his word is living. His word brings you life. His word brings you healing. You see, his word, it's, it comes from him. He is the sovereign God. There is no one above God. Your health is not above God. Your well-being is not above God. God gives you your health. God gives you your well-being. God gives you everything that you have right now. If you're at home right now, which you are, look around. All that you have is because of God. Slow down then and give him the glory and nourish your spiritual life because if you do not nourish your spiritual life, you then become malnourished. In other words, you lack the essential things to grow as a child of God. Remind yourself daily to be still and know that he is God. I think I can wrap it up right now and give the invitation. We're good. Be still and know that he is God. You need to have open lines of honest communication with God about your concerns, your needs, and fears. The reason why you got high blood pressure is because you don't have an open line to the master in heaven. You've closed the line. God has been calling you and calling you and said, child, I will give you rest. Just come to me. But you have not been picking up the proverbial phone to talk with him. You need to set aside time daily for personal prayer and scripture medita uh, meditation. You need to memorize the scripture that builds assurance of God's love. We've been talking about this in Bible study. You need to memorize the scripture because, you see, when, when you start to go through life and go through struggles and, you, and, and the Holy Spirit doesn't have anything in the cupboard to open up and pull the word because you have not been spending time in the word. I wonder how many of you have cupboards empty right now. 
you got cupboards full of canned goods because you ran on the grocery stores. I can't even find a decent uh, can of corn now because everybody have what hoarded all of the canned goods. And but 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 watch this: when God opened up the spiritual cupboard, it's empty. It needs to be full. It needs to be more than your physical pantry in your kitchen. Jesus said, shouldn't live on, you know, man don't live on bread, but should live on what? Every word that proceeded out of the word, uh, mouth of God. I, I don't know about you, but I'm with Jesus. Because let me tell you, when I'm hungry, God gives me food. When, when, when I'm thirsty, he gives me something to drink. Because why? Because he is the creator of life. He, is, he gives everything that is good. So we need to slow down. But then we also need to stop. Oh, my gosh. We need to stop. Everyone say stop. 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 I can't hear you, but I know you're saying it. Hey, man, stop. stop. Stop and look at the real reason you are experiencing stress. Stop and look at the real reason you're experiencing stress. Galatians 1 and 10 says, am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. That's Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. How many are trying to uh, uh, please man rather than God? The scripture says that if you're trying to please man, then you're not a servant of God. You are a servant of man in their priorities, in their agendas, but you are called, my brothers and sisters, to be a servant of the Most High God. You need to stop and look at the real reason you're experiencing stress. Do you try to meet your own needs instead of waiting on the Lord? You see, when we do that, we do not acknowledge that God is the one that can meet all of our needs. When we, when we try to meet our own needs instead of waiting on the Lord, then what we're saying is that, God, you're not powerful enough to know and understand my circumstances right now, so I'm going to go ahead of you, and I'm going to try to do it on my own. But God says, you need to wait on me. You need to wait on me. Now, that doesn't mean you just not do anything. That doesn't, no, that's not what that means. What that means is that when God has given you the ability and the capacity, you use your abilities and capacity to do the things that you can do. But those things that is out of your control that you can't do, you need to wait on the Lord. You need to wait on the Lord. That's what Paul was taking, telling the Galatians. Am I not trying to win the approval of men or of God? You know what? Paul was saying, look, I'm not trying to win, win your approval. I'm trying to win the approval of God. Look, I love you, boo. I, I, you know what? I, I'll be there for you. But let me tell you. When, when it comes to approval, I don't look for your approval. I look for God's approval. Do you think God cannot accomplish his purposes without your overachieving? Oh, yeah, we got a lot of overachievers. We got a lot of overachievers. You know what? I, I, I guarantee you there's some people that's listening and watching this video saying right now that, you know what, this world wouldn't go around if I wasn't here. That's an overachiever. <laughs> but they, they were, they, you know what, they would say, they are thinking in their mind that if they're not here, that means the world has stopped. That means everybody died because I died. No, no, no. God, God is the only supreme being. He puts you on this earth and he can sure take you out. 
And you know what? Guess what? If you have not been living a life of purpose, let me tell you, they'll come to your funeral, but two weeks later, they'll forget your name. Stop trying to overachieve. And you let God do all of the work and leave the consequences to him because you're, uh, you're putting stress upon your life because you think you need to do it. But God is saying, no, boo, I will do this. You can't do that. I didn't create the capacity for you in your mind to do it. You need to sit still and watch how God works. Stop overachieving. That's not popular, y'all. The earth is going to tell, the world is going to tell you to overachieve, overachieve, overachieve. No, stop overachieving because it creates stress in your life. There's some stuff that you cannot control in this world. There's a lot of things you can't control in this world. So stop trying to control it. All right. So also, not only do you need to stop and look at the real reason you're experiencing stress, but also stop, confess and turn away from your known sins in your life. Proverbs 28 and 13 says, he who conceals his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Thank God for mercy. But watch this. Do you manipulate or control other people? Do you feel envious or jealous of others? Do you express your feelings inappropriately? Yeah. Do you overreact to criticism? Do you have impure motives? You see, you need to stop, confess, and turn away from any known sin in your life. And if you said yes to any of those questions that I've given you, that means you have sin in your life. That means you have sin in your life. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that if you continue to conceal that sin, the proverb writer is saying that you will not prosper. You will not win. You, are, you will lose. That is a guarantee. You will lose. You will be defeated. But that's the contrast. Watch this. But notice that you ought to be praising God about uh, for this but. But. Whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. I don't know about you, but I want to be the, on the other side of that but. I want to find the mercy at God's throne. And I don't want to be defeated. Because you see, I'm a victor in Jesus. I'm not a victim, but I'm a victor in Jesus. But then... You need to yield. That was the other word, right? Yield. If, if those who are taking notes, yield. Keep me honest here. Yield. Yield to God's sovereign control over your circumstances. Oh, this is a big one. Yield to God's sovereign control over your circumstances. Watch this. The proverb writer says in Proverbs 21 and 1, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a water course wherever he pleases. That's Proverbs 21 and 1. Let, let me give you something you need to take away on yielding. Yielding to God is acknowledging God's right of way in our life. Yielding to God is acknowledging God's right of way in our life. You need to yield to God. You need to yield to his sovereign control over your circumstances. The reason why people are stressed out and burnt out is because they not, have not given God right of way in their life. You need to yield to God. Who is God? What is God, rather? What is God doing in your circumstances? Ask yourself that question. What is God doing in your circumstances? I told you right now, we live in in an in uncertain uh, situation, in an uncertain time because of the pandemic. What is God doing right now in your circumstances? 
in what way does God want you to change, brothers and sisters? That's, you need to yield to God because he is speaking to you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you and giving you some things that you need to change in your life because changing is yielding to God. Changing is yielding to God. How does God want you to respond, children? Because not only is changing yielding to God, but also how you respond is yielding to God. If you respond negatively, then you're not yielding to God. If you're responding to what God is telling you in his word and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in your heart in this life and you're yielding to it, then you're responding the way you need to. But also you need to yield to God your rights and expectations. You see, you need to give the control over to God. Stop trying to control everything. Stop, stop trying to control your husband. Stop trying to control your wife and your children. But you need to give the control over to God. And, and there's so many people right now living a defeatist life because of this situation. Because they have have not yielded to God the rights and expectations. They have not yielded to God or acknowledged God's right of way in their life. You know what? At times you need to yield your right to be heard and understood. Oh, I'm speaking to someone right now that the stress is in your life is because you don't think anybody hear you or understand you. Let me tell you, God hears you and God understands you because he created you. Maybe it is that the people that you're trying to get to hear you and understand you have not been, uh, are not yielding to the Holy Spirit to even listen to you. So why try to control that? You can't control that. You need to yield that to God. You need to give that over to God. Stop trying to change your husband or your wife into what you want your husband and wife to be. You let God change that person because he knows better than you how she or he should be. You got undue stress on you because you have put that in your own life and God has said, Wait a minute, honey. I need you to yield to my power. I need you to yield to my sovereignty. And let me tell you, when you don't yield to God, there's a wreck that's going to happen. And let me tell you, God is not going to be the one that's in trouble. You're going to be the one that's going to be towed out of life. The tow truck is going to come and get you, not God. Because his will will take place because he's God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, you need to what? Acknowledge God. You need to yield to God. <laughs> God is coming into somebody's lane right now, and I, I can feel it in my spirit that God is coming into somebody's lane right now. You need to pull over and you need to yield to him. You need to yield to him. And I, I believe the word is speaking to somebody. But then finally, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off today. Resume your speed. We said slow, slow down. We said stop. We also said yield, but now you need to resume your speed. Resuming your speed, my brothers and sisters, is a choice and it speaks of deliverance that comes from God. So what is resuming speed? Resuming speed is living in the presence of God. Resuming your speed is living in the presence of God. 
don't don't just stop life but you god says i need you to move i need you to move in life and, and, and I'm not talking about life that you see around here right now, this physical life, but I need you to live, move into eternal life. Eternal life is going to exist after this life. And, and the only way you can have eternal life is that you live in the presence of God who is eternal. God is eternal. And the only way you can have eternal life is live in the presence of God. But thanks be to God that he gives us a moment to live in his presence today. He gives us that moment to live in the presence today. The psalmist says in Psalm 62 and 1, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from You need to have this attitude. I choose to let Christ live his life through me. That, that's, that's the attitude you need to have. Let me leave you with something else. I choose to live in the present, not worrying about tomorrow. Let me give you something else I, I want to leave you with. I choose to refocus my thoughts away from my pressures to your purposes for allowing these pressures because God is working his purpose in us by allowing us to go through the things that we're going through. But I also choose to have a thankful heart regardless of the pressure I feel. How many of you are, are, are thankful right now for what God has done and what he is going to do for you in your life? That should remove pressure off of your shoulder and you should be accepting that invitation that Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. All of you who are weary, I will give you rest. And, but I'm going to leave you something else. I will choose to call on you, Lord, for wisdom and peace. And then finally, I will choose to commit to talking less and listening more. And I believe that if you take that with you today, I think you're going to have, I know without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to have a blessed, blessed morning. You're going to have a blessed week. And let me tell you, you're going to be walking in the presence of God. And then no matter what these governments say, no matter what happens in life, let me tell you, you know that you have peace with God. And the peace of God. Oh, my gosh. So I end it there. And I want to let you know that you can, too, have peace as we extend the invitation each and every Sunday. I don't want to assume that any of you are born again because that may not be the case. There may be some right now who are listening. There may be some right now who do not know Christ as Lord and Savior. And I want to let you know that God can give you rest. But it's a choice, isn't it? It's not something that he's going to force you to. But it's a choice that you, you need to make. And that choice today is given in the sense that he wants you to have rest. But the only way to have rest is to, first of all, understand that you got a problem. And we need to understand that you, that there is a problem and that problem is the sin problem. The problem is, is that every person, my brothers and sisters, is a sinner before a holy God and unable to save themselves. The Bible says in Romans 3 and 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's the problem. But then here is the penalty. The penalty is, that there is death. Every person is under the sentence of death and will be forever separated from God because of their sin. Romans 5 and 12 says, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered into the world and so death spread to all men because all have sinned. 
But then let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that God, he already knew this. He knew that men were on their way to hell. So he actually sent a provision. Yeah. And I want you to understand the provision is the good news that we preach. Yeah. The provision is the good news. You. See, you need to understand that to get rest, you need to accept the provision. Through the substitutionary sacrificial death of Christ, God has addressed the sin problem for us. Because Romans 5 and 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died for your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. And then finally, once you've accepted the provision, then there is pardon. He has freed you. God offers a free pardon and eternal life to all who place faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation. And let me tell you, you may say, well, what, what can I do to be saved? All you have to do is confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Why? For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. You see, God wants all of you, not just some of you. And when you do that, rest assured, that you have peace with God, he will give you rest. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your word today. And Lord, we know, Lord, that you have been glorified because your word glorifies you. Yes. Your word is truth. And Lord, we ask right now, anyone who's listening, that Father, Lord, that you would transform their life right where they are. And then, Father, Lord, if there's one who confessed Christ as Lord and Savior, that, Lord, you would now give them the purpose, the mission, and then, Father, Lord, give them rest for the work that you have called them to do. We ask it all in the magnificent and mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. This time, we're going to move right into